Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino uh, back here for this week's Survivor Burning Question. And I'm so happy that you're here with us to uh, talk about what came out of a really exciting episode of Survivor 44. This week on Survivor, we saw Danny make the biggest move of the game when he played his idol on Franny to protect the original Soka Alliance. Now, anytime you can play your idol to protect somebody in your alliance, You've got to do it, right? Um, well, it definitely used to be a good move, uh, but maybe not so much in the modern era, right? Well, that's the kind of thing that I've been thinking about all week long, and it's certainly a complicated question to explore. But after going back through every season of the show, I believe that there are clearly a few good reasons and situations where it's a smart move to make this play. That's the question that I'm hoping to address in this video as I explore all of the reasons to play your idol for your ally and what happened to the players who did this. Now, just for clarification, I'm defining playing your idol for your alliance in a very specific way. When a person in a group of at least three plays or gives their idol to somebody else in that group other than themselves prior to the final six at the final six and the final five all the idols it goes nut nut okay and we're not going to talk about this or it's going to be a nine hour video okay so we're not talking about the end game we're talking about the stage in the game that we're at right now which i'm defining at the start of the merge through the final seven and that's the point in which idols got played for other people in a group. Now, the first time that we ever got an idol played for an alliance actually happened exactly 30 seasons ago in Survivor Fiji. Now, I've talked about Fiji a lot in these videos, which makes sense because there was a lot of firsts in that season because it was the introduction of the modern hidden immunity idol that gets played before the votes get cast. Now, as far as the idol play goes, it's definitely a unique situation. Because it was one hidden immunity idol that was shared between four horsemen, Alex, Edgardo, Mookie, and Dreams. And it was an idol that Mookie and Alex and Edgardo found while Dreams and Lisi were sleeping. There. I know that myself, Dreams, Edgardo, and Alex made a pack together. But I need to figure out how I'm going to secure my space within this trust. Dreams didn't know about it when it was found, but after the merge, Mookie told Dreams about the idol and it ends up being a costly decision because before the final nine, they have their first real vote as the merge tribe. And check out what the immunity challenge happened to be. You are going to use your arms to brace between two walls while your feet are positioned on very narrow footholds. And actually, after hearing the rules, maybe Danny would have been disqualified back then. No hips, no back, no butt. No butt. Jeff. Danny. Oh. Moving on, Yao Man wins immunity and more importantly, wins over a more important swing vote in Stacy, the same Stacy that Alex and Dream saved the last tribal council. See last week's video about the tribe switch for more on that. Now, the horsemen suspect Stacy is out, and the four horsemen realize that four into nine is out, even without Brad Culpepper. Now, Mookie passes the idol to Alex, Dreams ends up giving a heads up to Earl, and it's Stacy that suggests putting the votes on Edgardo and nobody tells Dreams the new plan. Alex stands up at Tribal, plays the Four Horsemen Idol, and it's very fun that the very first play in modern Hidden Immunity Idol history is a swing and a miss. Voted out the fourth member of our jury, Edgardo. Need to bring me your torch. The Four Horsemen failed in the first ever attempt to play an idol for an alliance, but they had some of the right ideas. Edgardo, Mookie and Alex were all loyal to each other, and they saw last chance to swing the numbers in their favor as Earl and Yao Man were consolidating power. Their biggest mistake was letting Dreams get the info about where the idol is going. But the four horsemen were onto something. They knew there were two sides, and this was their last best hope to reverse the course of the game. They ultimately failed but we can learn from their motivation to act. The first reason to play an idol for an ally is when it's a pivotal vote between two clearly divided sides. Now, 
Over the next few seasons after Survivor Fiji, the idol doesn't get played a ton for an alliance or even for individuals. Amanda is going to play an idol for poverty in Micronesia, but the idol goes into a bit of a slump in Survivor's teens. More on poverty in just a minute. James, Ozzy, Jason, Brendan, they all get voted out with the idol in their pocket. And the fake idol creates more fireworks in Micronesia and Gabon. Enter Russell Hance in Survivor Samoa. Russell and the Foa Foa tribe were famously down 8-4 to four at the Samoa merge. Russell is going to really usher in a new era of aggressive gameplay, especially with the idol. Now, while I don't have a doubt that Russell would have played an idol for his alliance, he actually never does that in Survivor Samoa. He incorrectly plays an idol on himself at the first vote after the merge. It's perhaps Natalie White's best move that gets Galou to go after Eric Cardona, who also gets voted out with an idol in his pocket. And then Russell successfully plays an idol on himself to take out the great Kelly Sharba. Now, I only make this distinction about him playing the idol on himself versus an ally because I do think it's an easier call to make when you're the holder of the idol and you know the votes are going to be on you out of anybody in your alliance. That being said, Russell's alliance and the Galoo tribe members are all very aware of Russell's idols and how he's going to use them to advance his side's interests. It's actually in Russell's second season where playing the idol for an alliance actually becomes a really big part of the strategy because Russell himself is back in season 20 and he's down in the numbers in Heroes versus Villains with Danielle and Parvati at the bottom of the nine-member Villains tribe. Plan Voodoo has been invented at this time. Players know how to split the votes against an idol, but it's not an exact science. If the villains do the vote split correctly, there's going to be a 3-3 tie between Tyson and Russell, and Russell is about to go home on the revote. However, Tyson goes off script. He casts his vote for Parvati, and Russell plays his idol on Parvati, and Tyson goes home. This completely changes the first half of the game and creates a tremendous amount of trust between Russell and the duo of Parvati and Danielle. So another clear reason to play the idol for your alliance is to build up trust with an alliance. The three of them, Russell, Danielle, and Parvati, they're going to control the villain's tribe going into the merge, which ends up being 10 people with five heroes and five villains for a vote which is Survivor's most famous case of a Survivor playing an idol, two in this case, for their alliance. So both sides have five players, and this merge vote is setting up to be pivotal to how the rest of the season was going to go, and everybody knows it. Tonight's vote will dictate the rest of the game. This is the most important vote that I've ever been a part of. Now, of course, we all remember JT and the heroes thought Russell was on the outs. They send him the Hidden Immunity Idol. Parvati, she already had found her own Hidden Immunity Idol, and she kept it a secret from Russell and the rest of the villains. Danielle and Parvati were the last two people left in the Immunity Challenge, and they're hanging up there on the pole, and Parvati blatantly steps down to let Danielle win immunity. The heroes are convinced. See, uh, she stepped down. She must have the idol. Why was she so confident? Although one person who's not confident that Poverty has the idol is Russell, who then gives the JT idol to Poverty. Oh, you shouldn't have. So after the challenge, Amanda, on behalf of the heroes, she attempts to leverage her old friendship with Poverty and tells Poverty that she... Better play that thing. If we don't talk again, play it for you. Poverty sees right through this. She knows what Amanda was saying and that they're trying to flush Poverty's idol. So Poverty knew that the vote wasn't for her and that JT was still buying that Russell was potentially working with the heroes, despite Sandra's warning, and Danielle is immune. So the only two potential villains to vote for are going to be Jerry and Sandra. And we see... Parvati is going to play her idol first on Sandra. Sandra, not for you. Get out of here, for real. And then she adds one for Jerry, the ultimate target of the heroes. Jerry, that one's for you too. Damn it. 
It's one of the biggest moves in Survivor history. Parvati's idle play puts the villains in the driver's seat for the second half of this game. And though Parvati is not the game's ultimate winner, we end up with four of these five villains being in the final four of this season. And this is the best test case there is for playing an idol on your alliance. There's two clear sides and the numbers are even. But the best reason for Parvati to make the moves she made that night in Samoa is because she has perfect information. The other side gave away too much. And Parvati knew using her idol on the members of her tribe was going to be a success. The other side gave away the game. And in many different ways, Parvati was there with two idols to make them pay. But Parvati's brilliance, combined with some all-time fumbles from the heroes, proved difficult to replicate. Over the years, Ralph Kaiser missed when he played his idol for Mike Chisel at the pivotal Redemption Island merge, and Matt Elrod got voted out a second time. Ralph gets voted out soon after. Ozzy, the next season, plays his idol for Whitney Duncan at the South Pacific merge. And it was their other ally, Keith, who gets voted out. And Ozzy went home at the next tribal council. The three amigos were down in the numbers in Karamoan. And they managed to combine two idols and Reynolds' immunity win to get Philip voted out at the final 10 before Malcolm himself gets voted out at the next tribal council. And I'm sure people remember what a great move it was that Tony Vlachos himself made back in Survivor Kagiyan to play an idol for his alliance when he played his idol for LJ. LJ even played his own idol for Tony. And while I feel like Tony's idol plays are remembered fondly, Tony does not actually play an idol successfully in that whole season. But Tony did have a nose for finding the idol, and I've got to give some credit to one of the Survivor Idol Kings. Another reason to play an idol for an ally, as Russell knew before him, if you're good at finding idols, don't be shy with them. Now, it's actually Trish who got cast to flip to vote out Sarah Lucina at the Survivor Kagiyan merge. And Tony himself went from protecting LJ with an idol and vice versa to voting out LJ two votes later. Actually. It might surprise you. I've gone through all of the seasons to let you know that there's only been one person in the history of the show who has successfully played an idol for their ally to keep them in the game that's actually gone on to win. And that person did it in Survivor Cambodia. And it was Jeremy Collins. Now, this is a different situation than we've been talking about in these other seasons because it's Survivor Cambodia, it's the final 10. And this was famously a season of voting blocks, and there were not two clear sides. This was not a vote that's going to shift the balance of power to one side for the rest of the game where there's no turning back. What had happened was my great friend, Stephen Fishback, had the steal a vote advantage, and a lot of people were freaking out. There was a big group of players, including Spencer and Sierra, they wanted to take Steven out of the game and they were rounding up the numbers. And it was an easy thing for people to get on board with. We'll see Spencer try to convince Jeremy about why they need to take out Steven. But Jeremy's not budging. It's a bad move. Some people saying maybe they want to vote Steven out because of his advantage. I don't feel like that's a great idea right now. So that night at Tribal Council, Spencer, Tasha, Joe, Abby, and the late great Keith Nail they're going to vote for Steven, Sierra and Kelly. They're putting their votes on Kimmy. And Jeremy decides to play one of his two hidden immunity idols to save Steven. Our decision comes down to who can I trust more going forward? That's what fish pay. So I've been doing the research to go through this over the last couple of days, and I really thought that this was so interesting because as I've been trying to figure out the right time and the reasons to play your idol, this is really the first time that it's not a case of two sides going back and forth. That's not what Jeremy is doing here. Now, as somebody who's been doing the podcast for so long, you know, I've gotten to talk to and become friends with so many of the great players and 
Jeremy was actually nice enough to get on the phone with me and uh, talk a little about uh, this. And I asked him, you know, for Jeremy, like, why, why was this the right call to make? And what Jeremy told me was that he thought that Stephen was a trusted ally and Sierra was a person that he didn't trust at all. Jeremy had to decide what what scenario do I most want to happen next? Do I want a final nine with Steven and no Sierra or vice versa? And he clearly preferred the version with the loyal, appreciative ally like Steven, who was one of the few people that might have wanted to take Jeremy to the end. Also, who was a target in front of Jeremy since he still had his advantage as opposed to Sierra, who was making a lot of plans that didn't include Jeremy. Jeremy uses the idol here almost like a veto to change the person that was going home that night. And I think it's one of the most interesting reasons we've discussed so far to play an idol for an ally if you can save someone you trust and send home someone you don't. And for Jeremy, who had the luxury of having not one but two idols, this was a move he could afford to make. Even though Jeremy still had an idol at the next tribal council, Stephen wasn't so crucial to Jeremy that he'd play his last idol on him. Jeremy wisely held on to this idol because he knew he would need it later on and he would play it at the final six where he does it to advance in the most serious threat to his own game. Jeremy placed a lot of importance on keeping around the players that he trusted. So did David Wright. David's another player who was very willing to play the idol for others as he did so early on in Millennials versus Gen X. And Ty played his idol on Sierra Don Thomas to take out Malcolm at the Joint Tribal Council in Game Changers. Now, this hasn't been a great video for Malk. And Davey played his idol to save Christian and save the Davids, and that worked. And Michael Yerger tried to play an idol on Stephanie Johnson and it failed. And we can go on and on and on. But I want to bring this back to Danny. Now that we know all the reasons why you play an idol for an ally, let's discuss the case for Danny making this move. This clearly was not a case that there are two sides. In fact, in the new era, especially in the season with three tribes, this is almost never the case. Even though Danny, Heidi, and Franny are all originally from Soka, we saw Franny as recently as last week talk about working to blindside Danny after discovering Matt's fake idol. And for all the talk of the Ratu versus Soka war, I'm not really buying it. However, in the case of Danny, I think there is another reason that we can add to play an idol for an ally. And that's if people know you have the idol. I think there's now some pressure to play it. And I mean pressure in two different ways. Because now your target is heightened from people knowing you have an idol. And then also Franny, who's headed to the jury, realizes you could have saved her and you didn't. For Danny, like Russell, Tony, Jeremy and Ty, he does have a nose for the idol. He is able to play it for somebody else and have the opportunity to find that next hidden immunity idol. But when Jeremy chose to save Steven, he used his idol to protect an unwavering ally while eliminating a less friendly competitor. It seemed like a carefully calculated move. Danny, however, appears to be taking a less strategic approach as the Soka and Ratu war rages. Unexpectedly, Tika seems to be the real winner here, collecting allies like Franny and Kane along the way. Now, while Danny's idol play in favor of Franny was certainly a bold move, it remains to be seen whether she's going to reciprocate that loyalty. Franny certainly appreciates the gesture, but it's uncertain if she'll be swayed by that sentimentality in the long run. The duo of Danny and Brandon, meanwhile, forged an alliance over warm mayonnaise-filled wraps shared as they ignored Carolyn. Their mission? Ensure the survival of the challenge threats. Brandon, a consummate team player, he wanted Franny from Soka on the chopping block, but he never directly targeted Danny. Brandon even told Danny the plan was to vote out Franny, a courtesy that Franny did not reciprocate when she conspired with Matt and Carson and Kane about voting out Danny. In retrospect, I wonder, could Danny have been better off saving Brandon with the idol rather than using it as a weapon to destroy Danny? In the aftermath, Soka, 
has yet to gain the numerical majority. They're leaving Tika with the option to side with Ratu in the next round. And Danny's move, though flashy and undeniably memorable, is the type of play that all who aspire and have retired from Survivor fantasize about. But will it prove to be his undoing in a game as fluid as this? Maybe he should have allowed Franny to get voted out, let Ratu take the heat, and saved his idol for a day when he's going to need it, which might be just around the corner. I was so excited with how things went on the last episode. We got a real vote at the final 10. We haven't had a vote at the final nine all through the new era. So I really can't wait to see how this is going to shake out. I appreciate all the support I've gotten in the comments uh, from everyone who's been watching these videos and enjoying this series. It has been so fun for me to produce this season. So thanks for coming along on this ride with me. I would love to know what you thought. I'm sure I didn't get to every single time it happened, but I felt like that these were the most important ones that we could learn something from here in this video. So let me know what you think. And of course, uh, we will be ready to talk about another week of Survivor here on Rob as a Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to the podcast at robinsonwebsite.com slash subscribe. Thank you so much.